Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead series. Now in the last episode, the main thing of note is that we were pushing towards this subway station. We were looking for underground labs, and we actually did find a subway map that illuminated some areas of the map that probably contain labs. So we're going to need to head back to base, gather some supplies, and head out here to loot these new locations. Additionally, we had previously been looking for an NPC, we're pretty sure that they are dead at this point. We saw a UGV, which we believe killed that particular NPC. So there's really no reason for us to be here other than to go down and explore the labs. So everyone, welcome back. Uh, hello, hello, hello. So we're gonna head back to base and we're gonna prepare ourselves for heading underground. If we go down here, we can see these locations. The blue subway stations that are marked with a, a question mark at the end of them, I believe, are guaranteed to contain a lab. It may be just a percent chance or something like that, but I'm pretty sure they're always a lab and we did see two of them. Um, and if we pushed through here and we went to other subway stations, they will likely have subway maps in them as well. We found one immediately. So it's possible we could stretch this into quite a few things, but for now we're gonna head back to base. We are gonna be careful. How did we come in here the first time? I think we came in from the north and crept our way around the building. And we did see previously quite a few enemies at the pond across the street, and I believe they've migrated over. So we need to be a smidge cautious. We really don't want to be firing any rounds in this area. And then the other main concern was the horde of zombie technicians, which where are all of you that I'm seeing? We, oh, that must be where the UGV was because it's murdering everything. And we're in the daylight, so we... Navigating here could be a little tricky. We do have a Flesh Raptor coming at us. We're going to walk through the sludge here. We can deal with them one at a time. I'm a little nervous about the Flesh Raptor, as always. Let's drop our bag before we get into combat. In fact, let's just continue falling back for the time being. Because again, I don't know where that horde got to, and we don't want to be surprised with them wrapping around a building. Yeah, and you know what? They've they've fallen so far behind us. We're just going to backtrack to base and ignore them. If they want to come get us, they can come get us. Alrighty, so we're going to go back. We're going to put together probably a shopping cart at the bare minimum. Something we can um, take apart and carry up and down the stairs so that we have a basket. We, of course, we cannot transfer vehicles up and down stairs. As far as I know, that's still impossible. So we would need something foldable. Uh, or something we could take apart and rebuild in the underground area, which I don't think we want to do. I think we'll just take the foldable smaller basket for a, a folding shopping cart. And then, of course, we will dump our items on the floor, transfer them upstairs, and then put them back in the shopping cart for easy transport back to base. So I think that that is something we should be doing. We may need to go out and harvest some wires or something. I don't know if we're going to get to the lab in this episode or if we're just going to prepare, but we definitely need to prepare. So... Let's see what we've got here. Um, do we have any, where would, do we have vehicle parts in our vehicle here, set up a, as a zone here? Mm, vehicle parts to the northeast. So probably if there's more than one tile, they'll all be up here. Oh, no frames, huh? Mm, so this might take us a little longer than anticipated. Uh, we can make a lightweight frame. I don't know that we want to. Oh, can we not? Is that not how, did I spell something wrong? Frame, extra light frame. You need aluminum ingots and it takes 18 minutes. I gotta stop tisking in the microphone, by the way. I keep going back and editing and then uh, I'll edit a full video and I'll listen to it, just like parts of it to make sure it came out okay. And I'll just hear me going and things like that, tisking with my, with my mouth. I gotta stop doing that. I'm sure that's not pleasant to hear. It's so much louder than everything else. So I think um, it's just smarter. Well, no, because we need to make a foldable frame, right? It requires pipes. Shouldn't it require wires as well? Um, I mean, I guess if you... Like, I have a folding um, lug nut wrench in my vehicle, like a tire wrench. What are they called? Tire iron? It's, it's a collapsible one that um, folds out into a four-spoke thing. So I guess... And that's just basically pipes. So I guess it's possible... So we'll go out and we'll harvest some pipes really quick. Um, where would be the best place to get this? Oh, speaking of um, I just uh, watched a video. It popped up on my radar. There's a guy, I, I don't know his name or I would shout him out, but he, um, he makes a lot of content about 
passive income and growing YouTube channels and things like that. And every now and then I'll watch something from this guy, although I don't particularly like him. Oh, here we can get some pipes. Let's drop, is there anything here I can bash with? Probably not a plunger, probably not gonna do it. What would be the easiest thing to smash with our spear? Probably a chair. So we'll drop our spear and we will pick up a plank for bludgeoning. And we'll head back in here and we'll smash up these racks for some pipes. Oh, you don't seem to be damaging. No, that's the floor. Don't don't bash the floor. And of course, because it's a plank, it takes more stamina to uh, to smash this. Smash the workbench too. We have a workbench. I don't think we need to worry about preserving this. We're not damaging it. Okay, pretty sturdy then. So how many pipes did I get? Uh, just one pipe per thing. That's not enough. We need four, I believe. Can't believe I don't have any. I didn't, I didn't pick up any pipes anywhere. Um, let's haul this stuff into a pile. We'll pick up the pipes. Uh, oh, they're big pipes. Okay, well then we will pull them out with advanced inventory. But yeah, I was watching a, a video. It popped up. It said how to quickly and easily remove ums and uhs from your content. And I was like, okay. You know, I, I um and all a fair bit. So uh, maybe, you know, this would be good for me. So they're using some third-party program... Let's try smashing this lamppost. We're not damaging it. Okay. Where am I going to get pipes? There's some shelves probably in the restaurant. Oh, I did the tisk again, by the way. I noticed. Anyway, um, and they were using this uh, third-party program to basically go through their audio thing, and it automatically identifies when you say um or uh, and then it cuts it out. And so I left a comment, and I was like, and, and the guy basically in his content, he was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do this whole episode, I'm gonna do ums and uhs, just to illustrate how easy and powerful this program is. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. You know, maybe this is a good thing for me. I'd say um a lot. And so I'm, I'm listening, and he goes like, oh, today we're gonna be talking about um, this new program that I'm using. And I was like, no, it's not the same. People don't talk like that. They don't pause between their ums and uhs. They just say them. And oftentimes we stretch them into the next word. So like, yes, any, any audio program can pull out something like, um, an um that has blank space on either side. It's extremely easy to do that. And it's like you're you're misleading your audience because you're making it seem like this is a really easy thing that will work for everyone when in reality it will not work for anyone because that's just not how humans talk you know if you listen to my content i frequently stretch my ums into the next word or into the pre from the previous word things like that so i left a comment and was like hey this doesn't work uh for 90 percent of us because most of us don't have these clear deliberate pauses on either side of our words and I commented that and I was like, I bet this person bans me for saying that. Like, cause it was clearly sponsored. Clearly they've been paid to say this, like, you know, to, to rep this particular program. And I was like, I might actually get banned from a YouTube channel just for pointing out the obvious flaw in what they're doing. Um, and I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know how touchy this person is, but I, I definitely thought about that when I commented. Then I went down in the comments too. And there were a lot of people like, how do I um, remove, uh, you know, blank space from my videos without having to manually do it one by one by one? And so I left a few comments for people and was like, oh, hey, you know, if you use Audacity, you can actually um, remove, you can tr use the truncate silence ability. Audacity is a free program. You know, it works for an audio track very easily. You can truncate based on length of time. You can set a certain decibel limit to how low something has to be to be cut, etc. So it was actually kind of fun to go in the comments and be like, oh, hey, I actually know what I'm talking about for once, <laughs> which is unusual for me. So that was that was nice. Hopefully that person's not irritated that I pointed out an obvious flaw with what they were doing. But, you know, some people are very touchy. I'm very touchy when it comes to, um, you know, the way people remark on my YouTube videos. Sometimes I get very uh, triggered when people are actively ignorant. I don't feel that I was, but... You never know, you never know how somebody's gonna react. So we want to make a folding wire basket, which will require scrap metal. Well, we just got a bunch of that by smashing things. So we'll go back and grab some scrap metal. Surprised I don't have any in my vehicle at all, but okay. And this is taking, it's been 10 minutes. It is taking a long time just to, just to get this little bit done. And we have so much more that I wanna do here. Grab the scrap metal, we'll head back. Once we get the basket put together, 
probably we want to take some MREs. We're not going to be near our vehicles, so we're not going to have access to our meat supply and our freezer. Our vehicle is self-sustaining energy-wise, so we don't need to worry about the freezer shutting off while we're gone or anything like that. We have so many solar panels. Um, so we'll probably take some MREs, other non-perishable food maybe, or calorie-dense food, because remember, we are still burning a lot of calories. Let's make this basket, holding wire basket. Use the arc welder, because that's our vehicle power, I believe. And we'll put this together here. Um, MRE is probably the way to go. We probably should make probably about two gallons of fluid to take with us. Um, so let's start vehicle construction here to start a new vehicle. We'll call this uh, Basky the Basket. Sure, that sounds dumb, but let's, uh, and then I'm, someone's gonna comment and be like, actually Basky is a derogatory term for a specific ethnicity or something terrible is gonna come out and be like, that's an old, homophobic slur from the 30s and I'm gonna be like oh god what have I done uh, so we'll install the folding shopping bar shopping cart basket I don't know was that an off-color joke I don't feel that like that was a terrible joke to make but anyway um, so let's have a look at our food stores I tisked again <laughs> sorry internet I uh, I'm trying trying to get better trying to be better so this is our food pile why don't we so MREs were changed recently let's grab some MREs just pick up a handful of these and pop outside real quick. So MREs were changed recently. Oh, these are the old MREs. So I guess the old ones were left in the game just to prevent things from breaking probably. We don't need any of this. But now when you find MREs, they're no longer these items that you disassemble. They're actually um, containers that contain the additional food items. Seen a lot of people complaining about that, saying that it slows down the game because there are more items to track and things like that. These appear to be the old versions, so I will have to take them apart for them to actually be food items. Currently, they are just these MREs. We'll dump them in our basket. I don't know how many we should take. I don't know how long it's going to take us to clear that lab. I suspect probably a fair amount of time just because I... So I haven't been to a subway lab, I don't think, in a really long time. And if I'm remembering right, they had a ton and ton of enemies that are just like a bonkers number of enemies. And there's really not much there that I want. I think the subway labs are mostly like chemicals and chemi chemistry equipment. I don't think that they have a lot of bionics in them or autoclaves and autodocs and the things that we normally want when we go to a lab. But um, it's something. You know what? Why don't we take a book? Oh, you know, I don't know if there are beds under there either in a subway lab. I don't know if they have like full on residential areas where we could sleep. Oh, um, what do we do about that? I guess I could put together like a cot to take with us. We could sleep in the subway. Mm, I think, why don't we, geez, uh, I think bed rolls are a thing. Can't make a bed roll. Just type bed, maybe? No. Maybe cot? Can't make a cot. So how do you make something to sleep on? Hmm. Can't make a cot, can't make a bed. I could make a single tile vehicle that has a bed on it, but that's <laughs> that's not how we want to do things. Uh, geez, what do I do about this? Why don't we have, why are there no cot and, you know, I wonder if they're even in the game. I'm going to look them up really quick. Okay, so I looked it up. It looks like we have cots and bedrolls in the game, but none of them are craftable, which I think is kind of a mistake. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to make a sleeping bag or a sleeping mat. Um, so I don't think I can look up a, like, there's no sleeping bag that we can craft. Cots didn't have a recipe and bed rolls didn't have a recipe. In fact, there are no bed rolls. We just have mats, which uh, I have a fur roll mat I could make. There's a bed roll made of pelts, but uh, of course I don't have 24 fur pelts because who does in this game? Um, fiber mat takes five hours to make. Woven mat from fibrous materials that can be used instead of a picnic blanket for butchery. So it's not even it's too thin to be used as a comfortable sleeping place. So we literally just don't have mats to sleep on in the game unless you find them in the world. You can't make them yourself. 
Well, that's hugely problematic. Uh, what we could do is drag a mattress down there, or more likely what we should do is just come back to base when we need to sleep. I don't think we can... I don't think we can fully live underground. So taking all this food and stuff is maybe not as valuable as I was expecting. Let's grab our ammunition. I have no idea where our ammo is. That's disappointing. I don't, I don't see why I can't just make a mat to sleep on. Very straightforward thing. Let's grab our 556 ammunition. In fact, let's grab a bunch of extra uh, magazines as well while we're here. Grab a bunch of this NATO ammo. We are down to about 660 rounds. We've gone through about a thousand rounds of that ammunition. So let's reload many of these magazines. And that way we'll just take the magazines with us instead of taking a, a fistful of loose bullets in with us. Just reload all of these. Not sure why they're not stacking. This one is kept, oh, because it's favorited. If I unfavorite that and go back in. And let's drop Oh, and there's some on the ground. Pick that up, please. Then let's drop, I don't know, five of them in the basket and we'll keep three on our person. And we'll just dump the loose ammo in a basket, which uh, fun fact, I'm pretty sure if you just dump 500 bullets in a shopping cart basket, they're gonna fall on the ground, but okay, that's fine. Yeah, it did not fall on the ground. We should prioritize killing a turret in the future if we are able. What else do we need to take with us? Uh, maybe we should make some more bandages. Um, definitely need to pick up more hemos... No, we have enough hemostatic powder. We have aspirin. Do we have a flashlight? We do have a flashlight. The battery needs refilled. So unload the flashlight. This is a disposable battery, so it doesn't matter. Um, stop hauling. Drop our battery. Because we don't care about disposables. And then our other battery should be on our charger and we're looking for a nice full one. Why don't we pop on the old charger here for a bit while we do other things. So let's, um, let's grab one that's full just to reload currently. Let's reload our flashlight and we'll just pick one that's full. Yeah, the big disposable will do. I'm curious, is the flashlight on? Is that why it was burning charges? It's not now. I might've left it on previously. <sighs> okay. So we have food, we have ammunition, we should take beverages with us. How much tea do I have left? Uh, let's pick that up so we can see. Oh, but we probably don't have more pine boughs. We only have, okay. We'll drop that. And you know what, let's go into the neighboring houses and see if we can scrounge up a couple extra gallon jugs here. Should be pretty easy to do in your average kitchen. So any gallon jugs in here? Uh, gallon jug, I'll take that, please. Um, probably fridge is the best bet. Um, the, the milk spawns in gallon jugs, but of course has gone bad at this point. So it's probably very easy to grab hold of. Did I ever look what was in this cart, by the way? Uh, condiment, chili peppers, onion pickle, probably a hot dog. Oh, does it say? Now look at the vehicle. Vehicle, food vendor cart. Okay, so not a specific food item. It looks like a hot dog cart to me though. Do not step in the rose bushes. And we'll pop in this kitchen as well. See if we can grab ourselves an extra gallon jug. No gallon jug. Uh, we could take the three liter jar. I don't think it's worth it. And we could look for cleaning products in the shelves here. Yes, so give me the jug of ammonia. Dump that out and we'll put some water in there because if I know anything about ammonia, it's that it's completely safe to put water in a container right after emptying it of ammonia definitely definitely is fine and will not cause any problems we'll go back we'll make ourselves a couple gallons of water to take with us this is overkill by the way if you're trying to gear up yourself you probably don't need to do all of this but i like to have a plan for what i'm doing and and try to do things as best i can because i often get to a place like this and then realize i've forgotten some valuable things so would just like to try and remember, try to hit all my bases, things like that. We're very hungry. Why don't we eat these meat pizzas in our inventory since they are just going to go bad before too long anyway. Go ahead and eat our meat pizza. Plenty of calories there. G game is very sluggish all of a sudden. Not sure what's going on with that, but should be fine. And then let's drink some of this tea. Yeah, the game is very sluggish when I'm typing. It seems to be eating... Not eating my inputs, but delaying them. So like when I typed T, 
I actually finished typing before it popped up in the game, which is not a good sign. That's a sign that the game is, you know, struggling a bit. Let's grab some cough syrup because we don't want to go into the building and end up coughing um, while we're trying to explore a dark area. Four charges is plenty, so we'll drop that in here. Uh, we can drop the gallon of water as well. And we'll make a second gallon even though we don't really need to. In fact, let's not. Let's make a gallon of tea. Um, do we have enough for a gallon of herb tea? We do not. It would only be eight portions. Uh, herbal tea has a positive health benefit, which is why we would take that. Whereas the standard black tea and green tea do not. Mm, but of course, the black tea and green tea are much more common. Black tea in the United States is one of the most... It's everywhere. Um, you can get for like 100 tea bags for two bucks or something of black tea. Green tea is a little less common. It's very, very slightly more expensive. But those are the two that you will see the most. Uh, chamomile, I don't think a lot of people drink chamomile. The only people I, I know who drink chamomile tea are like older people, you know? I, I, they, they help, it helps you sleep, allegedly, that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't even know what fruit tea is. What is fruit tea? Herbs and dried fruit from plants other than the tea plant. Colloquial, colloquially called, yes, I said colloquially correctly, I believe. Called tea, technically it's an infusion. Yeah, so I'm thinking like um, like Constant Comment, I believe, is a very popular tea brand or tea type. It's like has orange peels in it and, and uh, like uh, anise stars or something like that. But anyway, no one cares about this. Why am I even talking about this? Let's make a gallon of black tea, shall we? Mm, use doesn't matter. Make the tea leaf. Sure, sure. So we're squared away on beverages. We're good on food. I'm going to take a book or two just in case I do get stuck down there and want to read for a bit. Um in case we do find a bed and we decide to sleep there. I see we are tired, which is really unfortunate because that means we're going to need to sleep here before we head back. I was really hoping we could get back to the lab here in the next five minutes or so. <sighs> what are you going to do? Uh, we should make some more boiled makeshift bandages. Uh, actually, we need to make makeshift first. I don't know if I have rags. Probably I do. Makeshift bandage will make um, 12. Take a minute and 48 seconds. Great. Uh, we'll go to boiled makeshift bandages. We'll make the full full on batch of those. This is something I should have done a while back anyway. So we'll put, uh, let's look at our inventory. How many, oh, they're on the uh, workbench in here. We'll grab those. They're hot. That's funny uh, because they get boiled. So they actually get a temperature. That's cute. I like that. Uh, so we'll favorite those. Hopefully that combines the stacks. It did not. Oh, because those are hot. They're not going to combine anyway when the others are not. Okay, um, let's drop like, I don't know, eight of them there. And then we will favorite the remainder, the remainder so that they don't disappear on us. Five charges of hemostatic should be plenty. Aspirin, what other medications would I need to take with me? Probably none. Everything else is situational. We can throw a bottle of disinfectant in there um, just so that we don't have to come back to base. Hydrogen. We'll grab a couple bottles of hydrogen peroxide. And at this point, we're filling up this cart a little bit more than I would like. How much space do you have? Oh, I can't see it's cut off. This is the only way I know how to look at um, current volume. Oh, wait, we can do it in the advanced inventory menu. 20 liters of 150 liters. Okay. So we have food, drink, medication. Did we throw that sewing book in there? I think we did. We did. We have ammo, we have magazines. What else do I need to take with me? Internet. There probably is something that you're sitting there and you're going, oh, you should take this. What, what would I take? I have the flashlight, which is important for navigating dark hallways. will make things a little bit easier. Maybe take a couple grenades in case there are turrets there, but I don't think those have turrets. We only have two grenades. I really should be saving my grenades for dealing with turrets specifically because that's like the easiest way for me to get I think someone just fell something just fell downstairs um the grenades are the easiest way to secure more ammunition I know a lot of people use exploits I'm really not an exploit kind of guy so I prefer to throw my grenades at turrets mm, equipment wise we're looking okay I don't need any of the gear my sneakers are on their way out I don't know that we have replacement sneakers might be a time to change to boots, steel toe boots. What's your encumbrance? Uh, let's look. Can we? We can't look at items on the ground like that. 
Go ahead and pick up those boots. I don't have any uh, combat boots. Really thought I would have combat boots by now. Kevlar vest. Uh, turnout boots are definitely not something I'm going to wear. The encumbrance is too high. No combat boots, huh? Pair of flame resist. Uh, no, not flame resistant. Oh, yeah, they are flame resistant gloves. Um, I don't think there's anything there that I... Yeah, so we'll just put on the steel toe boots. I'm pretty sure their encumbrance is not very good. Let's look at the sneakers next to the uh, non-combat boots. I was going to say combat boots, but they are just steel toe boots. So obviously the protection will be better on steel toe boots. I'm not concerned with protection on my feet too, too much. I'm worried more about warmth and I'm worried about encumbrance. So the sneakers are two encumbrance. The steel toe boots are 10, despite the fact that they both fit us. So that's not great. And the warmth is 10 higher, which is a little concerning given that it's summertime. My torso encumbrance is out of control. We really need to be dropping our bag when we go to fight and my feet. The encumbrance is not horrendous. Like it's tolerable. So we'll take off our sneakers and we will wear our steel toe boots. And we should look into picking up some sneakers when we when we get out and about. Anything else, man? I'm trying to think anything else I need. I have my scalpel, my combat knife for butchering and everything. I have a light source. I have a fire starting source. I have a claw bar. I have a don't really need a hacksaw, but I don't know. There might be bars down there. Same with the jackhammer. Jackhammer might be something worth taking. So we'll take the jackhammer. And we should fill this with gas. Um, also, why are you wielding a uh, magazine? Did I not pick up my spear or did I drop it somewhere again? Uh, I think we left it back here in this house. No, do not step in a rose bush. Hello, spear. I keep, I keep leaving you behind. I did say we would craft an end game weapon, but right now we're focused on the, the lab. So we're going to be doing, doing the lab here. And this magazine can just go in my inventory. That brings us to four, which is not amazing. All these things add slightly more encumbrance. And I'm going to drop the spear here so we don't lose it. And I'm going to go fill the jackhammer with some gasoline. And I believe I have a rubber hose in my inventory. I don't. So we will grab a hose. Not there. It'll be on my tools pile, which should be here. 40 rubber hoses. Well, good thing I have 40 rubber hoses. Uh, you know what? We'll just siphon out of the vehicle. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll siphon vehicle fill available. No pour into container. Uh, so I can't directly fill. I need a container to put it in. Uh huh. Well, we know there are jugs and stuff out here. Let's go grab from a different car. That way we're not just stealing. We have plenty of gas, but I don't know. We'll go get it from the neighborhood vehicles. And I really don't care what the container is. Three liter glass jar will do. Uh, you probably have diesel in you, which is not what I want. Yeah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna do it. Motorcycle, do you have gas? Kind of. So we'll siphon this. Fill available tank. No, so that just put it in its tank. That's not what we're looking for. Siphon, pour in the container, glass jar, and then refuel, jackhammer with gas. How much did you get? You're full up now. So that should do, we could take a little gas with us. How much is left in the jar? 200. If we're gonna do that, let's fill the jar completely, I guess. It's kind of funny. I assume the jar has a screw top lid. Otherwise we're just uh, holding an open container of of gasoline, which is uh, not really something we want to just throw in our, our cart here. So let's drop that and see if it spills. Because if you drop an open container, it spills, I believe. Did not spill. You're overburdened. Okay, well, that's because I'm carrying a huge jackhammer, probably. We'll dump those in there. The jackhammer, unfortunately, is going to take up a huge amount of space in our shopping cart. 30 liters. Oh, I thought it was much bigger. Oh, I was probably looking at the weight. That was much higher. Okay, spear, gun, food, water, medicine, bandages. Mm, man, what else will I need? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I always feel like I'm forgetting something. Don't need to take a rubber hose with me. We have a knife. We have our dissection tool. I think we're good to go. And I think I'm just tired of waiting around. So we're going to go. Oh, no, we need to sleep. Ugh. Okay. Um... 
So again, I think we'll sleep and we'll call the episode. Then next episode, we'll go into the lab here. All right, well, we slept successfully without incident as, uh, as per usual. It did take quite a bit of time. Oh no, don't drive. I didn't want to drive. I was going to flip on the lights, make ourselves something to eat. You know what? We'll make another batch of meat pizza. Why not? And we'll make it out of chunks of meat. That way we do carry a pizza with us so we have something to eat in the basement right away without having to crack open our non-perishable MREs. We failed to craft, which lost 30 freaking flour, which is a ton of flour. Why did I fail, by the way? Meat, pizza. I have the skill required, so I'm not sure why I keep failing this craft. This is the second or third time that we failed this craft. Failing sucks because it uses up your materials. Uh, so that's very irritating. We again, the limiting factor on our craft was flour. So we just full up use the whole pizza, four portion pizza worth of flour, all just because we failed. Very annoying. I hate when stuff like that happens. It doesn't really make sense to me. Let's eat some pizza. Very annoying. Very annoyed by that. I hate when that happens. And we will take a shot of cough syrup. One more hit of cough syrup now. Whoa. -oh. Isn't that a song? Losing my mind. Losing my mind. Losing control. Ooh, oh. Okay, no one cares. Have ourselves, uh, oh, we have no water. And we should be drinking pine needle tea anyway. Tea. We'll have a couple shots of pine needle tea. You remember that song, Internet? It was popular like, <laughs> probably like 10 years ago. So we're still thirsty, but alas, we need to move about our business. Go ahead and turn off the aisle lights. Uh, turn off the recharger in case that's burning a ton of our batteries. We are losing some. I bet it charged everything while we were sleeping. Almost everything is full. Uh, the only things that aren't are these disposables, which obviously don't fill up. But we'll turn off that recharger just to verify that it's not going to do anything while we're away. Quick save the game and internet. I believe we are now ready to go and explore this lab. Now, unfortunately, we will not be doing that in this episode. We are over time. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I, of course, will be back with more in the near future, and I'll see you next time.